Right, uh, I have done a load of 12 hour shifts and I was really tired so I wasn't going to look, do this video until a bit later but uh, we decided to have a look what ships had come and I was inspired by the two ships I found because these are a bit different than usual and with that in mind, number 58 is the Tactical Boom Tactical Cube Just to get the lights out because it shines too much off the book the Borg Tactical Tube. Tube? Cube. This is a Class 4 launch 24th century defences hull armour and uh, length of 3,040 metres. This did not contain Kirk's daddy. <laughs> no, it definitely did not contain Kirk's daddy. No. Or Kirk. No. It didn't have his daddy either. Alright. Borg Tactical Cube, designed the Borg Tactical Cube, the Borky, the Borky, the Borky, the Borky Evolve, and on screen, uh, in service 2370, length 3040 metres, crew 64,000 crew, top speed, transwarp capable, weaponry, beam weapons, photonic missiles, status destroyed 2377, wow, seven years service, that's, that's economical. Hmm, right. The Borg Cube. The Borg Tactical Cube was the most powerful of all Borg vessels and the ultimate in the simulation hardware. The Borg Tactical Cube between the classic cube shape of most Borg vessels. Hmm. But it also features extensive armour that covered a large portion of the hull. Oh yes, that's why it looks so bloody different. These areas not covered with the protective plating... Oh, sorry. Those areas not covered with the protective plating glowed with the familiar green Borg power signature. Can't speak because I'm so tired. Right, so there we go, some pickies. Seven of nine. Seven of nine. Seven of nine. Seven of nine. Unimatrix Zero is an idyllic virtual world created by Borg drones who had a, a recessive a gene mutation. This allowed them to remember their former lives and visit here as individuals. That's not seven of nine. I don't think. That's seven of nine. Yeah. I have got my passwords on, I don't know. And there we go. There is the vessel itself. The nuclear vessel. Uh, projectile. Four cues ran on nuclear power. You don't know. Projectile weapon. Beam emitter. More projectile weapons. Hull armor. Shield grid emitter. Projectile weapon. Beam emitter. Hull armor. Drone complement. The number of drones aboard a Borg cube could vary wildly. Some cubes had a complement of just 5,000, while others had 64,000. The Borg cube encountered by seven of nine's parents was said to have as many as 129,000 on board. Plus Kirk's study. Designing the tactical cube. It's a cube with stuff stuck on it. Come on, how much design work is the I don't know. Right. You have to make it look boggy. Boggy, boggy, boggy. Oi, oi, oi. Boggy, boggy. Oi, oi, oi. Uh, boggy. The boggy valve. Evolving bog. There's classic images there uh, from the Star Trek universe. Hugh. Huh? Oh, Hugh. Hugh, not Q. Yes, Hugh. And on screen. Star Trek Voyager Unity Matrix Zero. Don't fold it too far. Part no, one just... and part two. So there we go. And the picture of the nuclear vessel. It's not the nuclear vessel. Talking of the nuclear vessel, let's have a look at the nuclear vessel. Oh, that's disgusting. Thank you. Well, that's different, isn't it? Oh, oh. Boink. Squeaky lamp. Right, looks good in his box. Let's see if it looks good outside of its box. Yes. Ooh. Don't write stuff in it. Just I'm not writing. Which issue it is, so we know when we pack the boxes up. Right, so you're not writing stuff in, you're just writing stuff on it. This one's got a stand, it's very different. Yeah. And the cube, hey, hey, it definitely says that all ships have a metal part. This has no metal part. It's, uh, it's uh, quite a nicer looking. Uh, 
off. Different, very different. Light because there's no metal. Uh, but plenty of detail on it. Uh, nothing special to show you. There's the beam emitters. And there's the four sides and the bottom. So there we go, that one's a bit different. And looks like it just sits flat on each stand there, mate, like that, like that, like that. There we go, oh. me Cockney champ. This one you can turn it around so you can show different sides, don't you see? Like a variety each day. <gasps> it looks quite good, actually. There we go, that's quite a good one. Despite not having any metal. Or Kirk Daddy. What? You're obsessed with Kirk's Daddy. Kirk's Daddy. Wait. Right. alone. Next! Bring forth another ship that never contained Kirk's Daddy. Unless this one went up to a time where Kirk's Daddy was and saw Kirk's Daddy. I very much doubt it. Then Kirk's Daddy would have been on board. Right, this is one, another one that is very different. This is issue 59. Ooh, which means we've got 31 to go. Hmm. Yeah, we've just run out of shelf space again, so we're going to have to build another shelf. Right. This is the USS Relativity. Uh, NCV474439. Dash G, launch 29th century, length 193 meters, weapons disreputage. Uh, Captain Braxton. Unbreak my heart. I don't think he's say you love me again. I apologize to you now for you having to listen to him singing. Because when we walked up the door and bought out of my life. It's a township that can go back. Cry these tears. Anyway. You don't want to start bleeding. Uh, Star Trek Voyager's special, best special effects. On screen. How can you have best special effects? It's all supposed to be best. Hmm. In the 29th century, the USS Relativity was dedicated to protecting the timeline from dangerous incursions. So basically, it was a ship that went back and shot any story writer that made anything bad. Why is Moffat still alive then? I don't know. Uh, Captain Braxton. Unbreak my Not heart. Tony. First encountered, uh, first encounter with the USS Voyager came in twenty three seventy three. He/she was a captain of the Federation timeship Euron, and was directed by the Temple Inte Integrity Commission. This gets worse. This sounds like a this. Euron. This sounds like a badly written B movie. Directed by the Temple Integrity Commission. So, so, Temple Integrity Commission. Mmm, this will make a great 50s movie. To travel back in time to destroy Voyager. It was believed that Voyager had been responsible for the destruction of the Sol system. But this proved not to be the case. So there you go. Temple Weapon Core. The, relativ the Relativity was equipped with warp and impulse engines. Matter for the engine was brought in... By through a substantial intake on the top of the ship, which was just behind the temple warp core. Vandevar. This was the central element of the ship and allowed it to make journeys into the past. So basically, you just stuck loads of fuel in. So you didn't have to slingshot around the sun in a stalling Klingon vessel? They could have just made room for a skip delivery truck in the Enterprise and it just dumped loads of fuel into the core and then. Flux capacitor! It was done. Oh, flux capacitor. Or you could just nick a Klingon vessel off Dock with the Brown and slim shot around the sun and go back in time to San Francisco. And the Voyager, Data Feed, he looks like he's about to do something very strange to another officer. <coughs> he is. Uh, ooh, it's a very nice ship. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Central Temporal Impala. <laughs> temporal Geometry Contours. So... Could it have gone back and shot its own creator of their own writer of the story? Because we're making up words like Temporal Integrity Commission. Uh, temporal yes, Warp Core. then create a time paradox. Matter Intake. Main Disruptor. Main Bridge. Reaction Control System. Which and Starfleet Pennant. Hmm. 
You know that from Time Paradox is the doctor doesn't like that. Unshave my beard. That is an epic beard. I am hairy again. And do the hurt you cause when you humped on for you? Jotunheim! Oh, Jotunheim! 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 Is that a Swedish resort? Jotunheim? No, it's where the Frost Giants live and Thor's daddy went there. Thor, Kirk's daddy went there to beat up the Frost Giants. I'm crossing oh, the fandoms here. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> uh, Voyager. And um, Space Docks. Best special effects. Read. Most expensive. And uh, the Borg Queen. And the Doctor. The Doctor. The Doctor. Oh. <laughs> okay, we've already seen it. So, the USS Botany Bay. That's different. Science Fest. Yeah, that's what the uh, thing is on. Come! Who fought Kirk, not Kirk study? That is correct. Kirk's daddy was not in there. Yeah, key appearances, total voyage of relativity. First appearance, relativity. Only appearance, relativity. Although it wasn't Kirk a daddy in it anyway. I don't know. And it's Uncle David. Yeah. Knowing little bugger who got stabbed by the Klingons. Ah. So, thank you very much, Kirk's daddy. I mean, uh, people for <laughs> watching, if you aren't already, then please subscribe for you more naughtiness. And... See, see, the relativity ship then went into the past and stopped me from filming it because it's top secret. So we're now, we've gone back into the past using the relativity ship to rewrite the past that the relativity ship, relativity ship had done. And uh, now we're filming it. Right, so here we go. It's in his box. That does make sense somewhere in the universe. Yes. Very nice shot. Looks like great. <coughs> I should be writing issue 59 in a box. Issue 59. Ow! Ooh! Metal. Something moved there. Something moved. Ooh, it's, it's glittery. So if we can pack the boxes up, I know what shit goes in what. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, go then. <laughs> so there is the a Relativity. This is a fine looking ship. Very good model. And this is this model. Got hmm. stuck. And there's its intakes. Like air intakes. And the bottom here. Colour seems to go a bit weird over here. Hmm. Both look pretty. Ah, okay. Looks discoloured. Hmm. Okay, and it's you can see that on camera, but it's sparkly as well. And it's Oh great, it's the twilight of the uh, fleet. Appears to be quite a bit of metal. I think this is the plastic bar, but this is metal on this one. So, yes, uh, there's the top view. Top view, that's a 1980s uh, operating system. Oh, there we go, that's a different subject. Uh, there's profile. The front. Focus. And the underside. See, yeah, I can make a movie, no problem. Uh, and the art end. Ta -da! Hmm. I like that ship. That's quite good. That's a good model. It's got good weight to it as well. Let's put it on its stand. There we go. So it's nice on its stand too. I don't think there's much chance of this ball one coming off its stand. So let's have a look at these from a lower angle. There's one cool. There we go. A bit noisy, but there we go. There we go, I managed it. Hey. So there are actual vessels. Is it better without the light on? Hmm. Not really. Uh, it's a bit of a compromise, this. But there we go. And fluffy reading in the background there. So, yes, like these two models. No plastic in there's no plastic, no metal in that one. But there's loads of metal in that one. Uh, so, bit of compromise, but still a great model, that. I think it look very nice in the collection, which I shall show on another video when we put up another shelf. So, thank you all. Au revoir.
or March. And if you haven't seen the special from this month, I'll put a link in the description to the special. Uh, which is <laughs> probably one of the shortest lived ships in the uh, Enterprise. In the Enterprise? In the Star Trek universe. So, Kirk's daddy. And Kirk's daddy was on it. Kirk's daddy was not on any of those two ships. No, he was on that one over there. The special, which we were talking about if you were listening. Oh, duh. You have to go to see the video. Teaser. Ah. Yeah, so. Thank you how much. Please subscribe if you haven't. And social media and all that stuff and Kirk's daddy is down below. Thank you very, very how much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>